So I know I've done other videos about neuropsychology and how to become a neuropsychologist, but in this video, I wanted to talk specifically about some of the conditions that a neuropsychologist will see on a day-to-day -day basis. What is up fam? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Phil Sarpon. This is Phil's Guide to ID. This channel is dedicated to all things psychology, wellness, and graduate school. Today we're going to be talking about some of the main common conditions that a neuropsychologist will see on a day-to-day -day basis. Now I've done other videos in the past about what neuropsychologists are or what they do, but in this video I want to specifically look at the specific health and medical conditions in terms of what a neuropsychologist may see on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, so before we look into the conditions, I do wanna mention if a neuropsychologist is working in a hospital, most likely they're gonna be working with medical professionals like doctors or neurologists in terms of diagnosing and helping with neuropsych testing as well. If they're working in a private practice, they may have to refer a lot of their patients to actually go into a hospital, do some testing, and then maybe come back for neuropsych testing. And so there's gonna be a difference or very Experience and how neuropsychologists are going to function on their day-to-day -day basis based on where exactly specifically that they are working. Now, if we just take a neuropsychologist who's working in a hospital, one of the things that they are probably going to do is that a physician or a neurologist is going to have the patient maybe go through some neuroimaging techniques. Neuroimaging is basically a fancy way of saying that they need to get and understand what exactly is going on in the brain, either by using things like MRIs, which are magnetic resonance imaging, or a CT scan, or maybe an EEG scan. So all of these are basically going to look at the brain structures of what is going on in this person's brain. Doing a lot of neuroimaging gives the neuropsychologist an idea of what exactly could be going on. And so a lot of times people will ask me whether or not neuropsychologists do therapy and conceptually, most psychologists actually will be able to do neuropsych testing if they wanted to, especially if they've already gotten some of the training in their doctoral programs. Now, a lot of times, most psychologists wanna just focus on therapy, and so they're not specializing all on neuropsychology. For neuropsychologists, neuropsychologists basically have to learn how to become a psychologist first before they can specifically specialize in neuropsychology. And so technically, if a neuropsychologist wanted to, whether in private practice or maybe at a hospital, they could do both testing and therapy at the same time, uh, whether it's a couple days a week of therapy or a couple days a week of testing. So for example, most hospitals are going to specifically hire a neuropsychologist to just do testing and they're gonna have other psychologists and therapists to do therapy with those patients. And so as a neuropsychologist working in a hospital, probably 95 to almost all of your time is going to be specifically focused on doing testing. If you wanted to become a neuropsychologist and to do testing and do therapy, you'd probably have to find a job that would allow you to do both or go into private practice where you could do both. Okay, so once we have gone through a lot of the testing, the neuroimaging testing, in terms of looking at some of the brain structures of the brain and figuring out what is going on, then a neuropsychologist can actually start to maybe do some medical diagnosing with the physician in terms of figuring out specifically what is going on. And so these are some of the conditions that might come up in a hospital setting. The person may have a brain tumor, there may be cancer, there may be epilepsy, there could be some learning disabilities, could be some memory disorders related to Alzheimer's disease, some mood disturbances, perhaps uh, some constriction of the arteries at the base of the brain, multiple sclerosis, nervous system dysfunction, Parkinson's disease, stroke, and maybe even traumatic brain injury. A lot of these are gonna be medical conditions that are diagnosed, but what's really important about this is that as a neuropsychologist, once you are able to diagnose these with the physician or the neurologist, then you can figure out what specific neuropsych testing to give the patient to actually come up perhaps with more recommendations and what that patient can do to help them manage whatever symptoms or whatever conditions that they're going through. Overall, this is going to involve 
involve a really thorough medical review of the charts, interviews with patients and the family members, and maybe collecting some of the assessments to give to the patient, and then writing a report to give to the patient to help them figure out what exactly to do from there. Now, most neuropsychology testing is paper and pencil. There are going to be some tests that a patient can do on a computer-based uh, way, but most of them are gonna be paper and pencil. And there's gonna be different things, like they're gonna maybe ask you some things, show you some pictures of a car or a bicycle, or ask you to explain it, or ask you to write things down. And what they're trying to gauge and understand is basically your verbal communication skills, your motor skills, your problem solving, your executive function, your attention, your memory. They're trying to evaluate what conditions in terms of your overall functioning are not doing so well, and maybe what you are doing well in. For example, if someone is not doing well with memory, uh, maybe because of a traumatic brain injury, maybe they got into a car accident, and now they're going through a lot of memory loss uh, to recent events, then potentially a neuropsychologist could work with a physician. Maybe there might be some medication that could help that patient, but maybe there's some other cognitive things that they can do on a daily basis to help them with their memory issues as they recover from the traumatic brain injury, right? So this could involve games, this could involve tasks, this could involve other family members really helping out and contributing to the recovery of that patient. There's a lot of different factors and recommendations that a neuropsychologist can give specifically to help that patient with memory as they're taking medication or as they're doing other different things as well. But there you guys have it. I wanted to give you guys just a list of different things that you guys could see in terms of the conditions that a neuropsychologist is probably going to deal with on a consistent or a daily basis. If you guys have any questions about this, definitely put it down in the comment section below. If you have not already, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, and I will see you guys in the next video.